Good Morning America. Today from lovely sunny downtown Binghamton where we're going to have a remarkable warm sunny day where the grandkids I know are going to go out in their little kiddie pool. Um, I bring you Smart Women Conversations. This is Yvonne DeVita and I hope you're having sun and fun where you are also. Today I have a really superb guest and again as I tell you quite often, my guests sometimes come to me through other connections that I make, which come to me through connections I have on LinkedIn or Facebook or somewhere else. So we're talking social networking here. We're talking using the internet. We're talking business in the time of COVID-19. That's what we're doing. Today, I have Sarah Jordan. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you, Yvonne. Lovely to see you. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Sarah and what she does, and then we're going to get into her story because I'm, I'm so um, committed and, and just passionate about what she does. She, she's really doing some important work here. So Sarah is an award-winning entrepreneur who moved from the world of charities and digital technology to underwear in 2016. When? A trip to Uganda led her to discovering some of the problems faced by women and children who don't have access to something you and I take for granted every day, underwear. She returned determined to do something about it and when combined with the discovery of the devastating impact of conventional cotton crops, this led to the creation of YOU Underwear. YOU Underwear makes stylish, organic cotton underwear for men and women. It uses a sustainable manufacturing process committed to minimizing waste and plastic that uses real models and doesn't airbrush their images to promote body confidence and positivity. So real people like you and me, and, and they have a buy one, give two model to provide underwear to people who don't have it. And that is really where uh, I am today with wanting Sarah to tell us her story. Sarah, give us a little bit more of your background before you became um, You Underwear. Sure, thank you. So my background, as you said, is actually nothing to do with fashion or manufacturing or any of the skills I've had to employ in the last few years. Um, it was much more on the kind of technology side, I suppose. So actually I trained in geography and computing. I wanted to be a meteorologist. Um, I love finding out about the weather. Um, and that shifted um, in the early 90s online, essentially, just as all of the web technology was developing. And I worked in technology in an educational context. So how you can use websites and technology to improve education and learning for kids. Um, and then in charities, so not-for-profits like Oxfam here in the UK, where I ran their sort of digital technology arm in communications, fundraising, so how they could use it to um, help people support them, and, but also in their programmatic work, so in emergencies and in their long-term development programs, looking at how they could use mobile phones to improve people's access to education um, and content for agricultural programs and that sort of thing. So very different. Um, in just the, the type of work and even just how I was doing it because I was very much working in big big companies, so publishing companies, education, and then charities um, in a full-time job, then part-time side projects, going freelance, and then starting my own business. So I've done the full range of careers, I suppose, very slash careers, lots of variety, and as I said, nothing to do with what I'm doing now, which has been a learning experience. Well, what you're doing now is is necessary. I, I feel like when we look at the bigger picture of the whole world and, and we venture kind of outside, I love the neighborhood focus. I talk to my clients about, you know, your neighborhood focus um, and remembering that your neighbors know people somewhere else and those other people know people somewhere else. And so you build this community and yet we still sometimes don't get out of our own neighborhood. And, and this is why I'm so fascinated and um, eager to share this with uh, my, my um, audience, 
tell us about your trip to Uganda and what it means and what it meant to you because I I really sometimes do feel that we forget how privileged we are here um, in the UK or the United States. So talk about that. Yeah, definitely. So my trip was, so it was four years ago, kind of almost exactly, actually, it was May 2016, um, May, June. And I went as part of a trip to volunteer in local communities in Uganda as part of the Uganda Marathon at the time. Um, and it was very much about doing something different. So I was kind of switching jobs, had different plans and just wanted to go and do something positive. So a big trip, an adventure kind of for me, but actually something that was positive. So not just a kind of physical challenge, for example. Mm -hmm. And I went, spent a few weeks out in Uganda and absolutely loved it. So I was working, living, volunteering in local communities in a rural area near um, a town called Masaka, which was hours away from um, the capital city and just loved it. And I was volunteering specifically with different community projects and supporting women out there who were starting small businesses. Ah. And we were just working with them to sort of share some of our skills and support them in their different initiatives. So the women in these communities were incredibly creative and innovative and just struggling with a huge amount at one level, but not phased by that and just looking to improve their own opportunities. And the one project that I was working with was where they were making sanitary towels and nappies. And the business was struggling and we couldn't work out why because it was a perfect little sustainable business, making the products for themselves and the community and to sell. And they were really, really finding it hard. And we spent a lot of time with them and eventually worked out that the reason behind it was a lot of the women in the local communities didn't have any underwear to put the products in. So there was no point having a sanitary towel, for example, because you didn't have any underwear to put it in. So it didn't make any difference. You couldn't make it work. And so I was I'm, just... I'm a little confused about that. So I, for everybody else, when you say they didn't have any, any underwear to put the product in, you need, you, you're saying that they they didn't have... They didn't wear underwear, so the product wasn't going to be used the way it could have been. Is that yeah. what I'm hearing? Okay. Yeah. So it was just that basic necessity, the basic item of clothing, essentially. So underpants, bras were just a real rare thing in those rural communities. And they certainly, if they did have one or two pairs, they didn't have enough. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, when they had their periods, they didn't have any way of using the kind of protection that we would be familiar with mm -hmm. and so they were then really struggling so they would miss the girls from sort of 9 10 11 upwards were missing at least a week um, of their education every month and that was obviously running through the year and just the difference in levels and access and everything from the girls and the boys at that basic age was just hugely different and we can kind of imagine some of the challenges of, you know, from a health and hygiene perspective of not having underwear mm -hmm. and a respect and dignity and safety. But it was the bigger impacts of education and employment that really struck me as well, because it was just it is something that we take for granted. We put our underwear on first thing in the morning. Don't even think anything about it. And yet, if you don't have it, the impact in terms of your educational, you know, 25 percent of their education, they weren't completing school. They were therefore going on to get lower paid jobs if they were able to work. They were excluded from their communities. And it was just genuinely really made me piss me off, to be honest, because I was just like, it's so fundamental. It's so basic. It's so Why unfair. is this still? It's so unfair. It's so, yeah. And it affects girls, women right the way through purely because of that. Mm. And uh, you know, it was just something that really struck me that why is this still a problem? Um, why can't we do something about it? They were really trying their hardest to set up these businesses to kind of improve their own situation, support their families, communities. It's the old thing about training and supporting women. And, you know, it, it's fed much more widely through the community is so true. And yet they were restricted by this basic element that, um, that we just don't think anything about. And, we know certainly in, in the UK a little bit more about period poverty and people not having access to kind of protection and that sort of thing. But underwear is the same. You need, you need both. 
And so it just really struck me that it was a huge gap, something that um, I thought I could do something about, basically, that just really drove, motivated me to, to try and tackle that. Um, mm. And so it all led from that, basically, wanting to solve that basic need. So... Um, Yes, and that's that's exactly what we talk about uh, nurturing big ideas. How your passion, um, something that you d discover you're passionate about, can be that career or that path for you. But the women and the girls that you met, and um, I, I want to talk more about them because we have so such a limited exposure to anything outside of, again, our neighborhood or our community. No, Even if we see a do documentary on National Geographic on TV, this is not, um, it, it's just something you watch from the comfort of your living room and you have your underwear on. <laughs> but um, these women and, and girls, they live completely different lives. And tell us a little bit about the lives they lead. And I don't, let me just make this clear. I am not saying that the way we live is wrong. I am merely saying that it's good to understand what is happening on the other side of the world. And if there's a way for us to help, um, because they're going to be helping us by teaching us more about humanity. That's how I feel more about being a human being but tell us about some of these girls and women that you met yeah i think you're exactly right it's not ours nothing is there's no right and wrong it's just different right um and for me it just struck me that as you say we see a lot of this and certainly my background working in not-for-profits and charities like oxfam where their mission is to end poverty i was used to that i've traveled a lot in africa i've traveled you know a lot of places and seen and often in very rural remote locations where you don't have a lot of access to services, but it was just, it is the humanity. So it could have been me. It could have been you. It could have been any of our friends, family. It's just the luck of where you're born. And yet the, the flip side of that is the challenges faced by those, those women in that situation. In reality, they didn't think it was necessarily a problem. They were more struggling with the business idea. Why couldn't they? Yeah. Um, you know, you know, it's, it's, again, it's our judgment from our very privileged perspective to say, actually, you should have these things. And I was conscious of not necessarily even forcing that idea on people because it's not necessarily right. We have a very, um, it's a very different culture and it was more just people having the choices, I think, in all situations. If they wanted to do something, being able to do that and not restricted by something that basic. Um, it is, it's a very different, so we were in a very rural community um incredibly friendly open engaging we were camping living with the with the locals in their houses um and just helping them with the different business initiatives we were working with a couple of local orphanages so they had um some homes that were supporting kids who were deaf and that was a really a facility that was just really lacking in uganda so we were doing a lot with them um and just basic things like painting the schoolyard and giving them some toys to play with and playing football with them and um you know just being there and kind of you can learn so much and with the kids you really see it because they are the ultimate in creative and sort of ingenious games with just the bottle top and you know you don't need a huge amount of stuff and it's something certainly i'm really aware of how much stuff and consumption that we have and do that's just so unnecessary yes um, yes well yeah they taught me a huge amount about and just the role of the role of women in those societies is incredibly strong incredibly powerful um and they were very keen to um to have that domestic role so it is gender equality is very different i think mm -hmm. in a lot of those communities but they were also trying to support their own families and their own kids and kind of like we all do we want the best for our families and it was that was exactly the same mm -hmm. um, so yeah so, it was an amazing experience yes and that's that's exactly the sto kind of story that i love to hear um it's it does bring home to the amount of stuff that we have here um in the west 
but so the women and this is this is what i feel in my heart um i talk about years and ancient centuries ago how women really were the pillars of the community because they were the ones raising the children <clears throat> and um we don't hear about or talk about how women all those centuries ago um, were the leaders <clears throat> and had a voice. And so when we talk today about these women and the small businesses that they're building and how you were able to help them, um, it's exactly what, what you're saying. It's helping them with something they don't, didn't have access to or didn't understand previously and it isn't it isn't a charity it's an education yeah definitely i think it's i mean i think there's a huge i think you're very right i think the we live in a very different society now from um hundreds of years you know previous centuries and generations mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. society ha was at previous times very much more matriarchal than it is now and you you see the pros and the cons of that definitely um i read fairly recently a book i think it was mary beard woman in power where basically through history it's completely flipped so women were it was a much more matriarchal society women were in charge in the egyptians and earlier cultures women were had a much higher place in society and ruled and it was a very different place and i think that's shifted and i'm kind of hoping it shifts in a different way, not necessarily back, because I think it's got to be more equal. But I think there's a lot to say for female empowerment and the different perspective that that brings. Definitely. Well, exactly. Um, there's yeah, and it, it was they were amazing, and they taught me a huge amount, and just the enjoyment and welcoming into those communities was phenomenal. Um, it did it help you? Let me ask you if when I think of doing something like that and. I, I sadly probably never will get a chance, but when I think of it, I, I feel in my, I don't know, in my center, in my soul, that it's a connection to uh, women that, I, I don't know how to explain it really, kind of a unique connection that women have um, wanting to be that person who helps the community and men have it also i'm not saying that but i'm talking we're talking today about the women and the girls um and and the feeling that there's there's ancestry here there's his, history here there's this is this is something that you're doing and experiencing um and they're doing and experiencing with you that brings i mean the history of women and what we do i mean kind of to the surface let's say yeah i think so and i think it was a mix of so it's the human connection because ultimately we all have more in common than kind of divides us yes. and i genuinely believe that and when you meet people on that level it is about connecting on a one-to-one -one level and you make friends I'm still in touch with a lot of the people that I met there and I as soon as I can we'll be going back and I just it's but it's very much about no, getting to know those people as individuals and sharing you've got some things incredibly in common despite the miles that separate us and you've got other things where it's just coming from a totally different angle and neither of those are right or wrong it's just really interesting to get people's perspectives and they were fascinated by some of the things that we think are important and just laugh at us for that and you know can have you can have such interesting conversations across those those huge differences um and i think yeah the, the role of women we are um you know do tend to play a wider role in families and communities and the empathy and just trying to you tend i don't know whether it's a more holistic kind of approach and, and looking outside your individual circumstances to wanting to have a positive impact on others and i think that's true wherever we're from i think that's something the nurturing side of the female being or however you call it i think it's yeah there's definitely that plays a part and it's um you see it in different ways in different communities and cultures but it's 
it's there as a common thread, definitely. Yes, it's it's a common humanity, and that's that's what I was trying to kind of get to. And it's a common humanity that has existed throughout the years, is is also what I was trying to say, mm. is that we we haven't changed that much from all those years ago. Uh, when we would walk to the well with our child on our hip and get our water and talk to everyone um, at the well, find out what was going on and what needed to happen and, you know, who was going to make this particular meal and who was going to put the laundry out, and things like that. And I, I find it fascinating that we've gotten so far away from it um, in the modern society where I'm not saying that we have to go out and live in dirt or huts, I, you know, the point being that the meeting at the well and the communication and the connection and the things that you experience there that help you be and see another world that really is part of the world you belong to um, and then led you to create you underwear. So, so let's transition then to that and how you underwear works because it is all, again, it's all part of our community as human beings helping each other out. Yes. So that's, yeah, exactly that. I mean, I came back from that trip wanting to do something basically, um, seeing, having those connections, seeing that, common humanity and just wanting to play a part and seeing something bigger than um than just what i was doing and so yeah we i set the business up basically directly with that view as i said not with any experience so not really coming i didn't come back directly with a thing about creating a business and manufacturing underwear i just came back with a need to get underwear from some somewhere to provide that to people um, and seeing how that sort of sat in the bigger the bigger picture and what the, the communities were doing already and then looking at um, how you manufacture underwear and the fact that cotton underwear is better for you more broadly and sort of looking at health and well-being um, and that side of it but actually on the flip side conventional cotton is incredibly polluting it's a very harmful crop we consider it as natural um, but actually the pesticides and chemicals used to treat it are incredibly harmful from the farmers mm -hmm. to people that manufacture it and to us as end consumers. So that was again, another sort of light bulb moment to me saying, hang on, there's something, you know, inherently harmful in something that again, that we think is a fairly natural and, and basic process. So it was joining the dots between those elements really and wanting to provide underwear, wanting to therefore manufacture it well, because I didn't want to be creating something that was causing more harm than good, mm -hmm. um, which was where the organic cotton came from. So we were really strongly based around that from the start and wanting to support the communities that were growing the cotton, um, farming it, manufacturing it, and going through that whole production. And then looking at how we could sort of join those up to make sure we were having that sort of being a sustainable business, having a positive impact, and then donating the two pairs that we donate for every pair that we sell. So we found a charity partner called Smalls for All um, who do exactly that basically. So again, my charity experience was very much about working with the specialists and the people on the ground that know where you're gonna have the most impact. It wasn't about me flying in, me providing underwear. It was about working with local groups who know where the need is greatest and can work with rural communities or refugees um, and IDP camps and that sort of thing and women's women's refuges to just make sure that the underwear was going to the place that it was needed most so that's the kind of model behind it and then once we'd made the decision to be sustainable and try and have a positive impact it was just how do we do that across our entire business basically from the manufacturing so making sure it's not using any um, forced slave labor child labor no chemicals, no harmful products, um, cutting out all of our single use plastic, making sure everything is recyclable. Um, we're looking at doing a take back scheme so that we can have end of life um, returns for our products as well. And just trying to minimize our impact on the environment more generally, because I was conscious of we're still encouraging consumption. And I didn't, I really wanted to make sure that that was having as um, small or as, and as positive an impact as possible and not just producing more stuff in the world because we've got enough stuff mm -hmm. so so the the underwear then that is donated 
you are um, careful about where it ends up in, it goes to Uganda, I, I assume? Uh, yeah, it goes to a number of different countries. So it goes to Uganda. Um, it goes to, I think, 15 different countries in Africa. Um, so Malawi, Tanzania, Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, Uganda, definitely. Um, it, we also donate um, through Smalls. They also work in the UK. So we support women here who are in homeless shelters or in wow. refuges. Um, and actually we're working with a local charity in Oxford. So I'm in Oxford in the UK and we're working with a local charity here um, to support people that have been affected by the coronavirus COVID-19 shutdowns because um, a lot of people that are homeless have struggled even more at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we're also providing underwear to them. So it's trying to have a local impact as well because shockingly it's just as big an issue and as much of a problem here as it is in Uganda and Africa that people don't have access to underwear always. So we were keen to kind of try and do that locally as well as um, so broadly. That's, that's a, a kind of sets me back a little to think that but it makes sense the people in homeless shelters i mean they have so little um they need things like underwear who who would think no exactly um, i had no i mean i had no idea i've learned with all of this i've learned a huge amount because it didn't again it didn't cross my mind because um even when you know people don't have things here, you again, you sort of assume the basic necessities are taken care of. Right. But actually, underwear is one of the things that people don't donate, I think, is the challenge. They just, we don't really think about it. So right. warm clothes or coats or sometimes sanitary products and healthcare products, and people do a bit of that, especially um, in the winter here or around Christmas, there's campaigns to kind of try and provide those basics. But underwear is just forgotten on that list. And so underwear and socks are the two things that just don't get donated. People either don't want to, don't think about it. Um, and yeah, I was absolutely stunned when they said they've, interestingly, they've started working here. So they were set up to do the work in Africa and they've started doing it here since it's become more of a problem, which is even more shocking. It's, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I, um, a, a few years back, I, when I lived in Colorado, I belonged to a networking group and once a year they um, collected socks and we would all go out and buy socks and we would come and they would take them to the shelters and never once did I say, oh, what about underwear? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you, you don't. And it's not, I mean, it's the same thing. It's not about feeling, but yeah, I had no idea. It didn't, again, it just, you just don't think about it. We are so at one level disconnected and even with all the information that we have, there's some things that you just don't discover until yeah. somebody says something. So Wow. Well, this has been extremely fascinating and important. Important. So, ladies and gentlemen, this, this conversation is more than just me talking to a smart woman. Sarah Jordan clearly is a very smart woman, but this is for um, both of us to encourage you to start thinking about these kinds of things and yes i will um have all the information on sarah her website and um, how you can buy some of the um you underwear um in the blog post but you know this is a perfect time where we have we privileged people have been told you can't go out you can't do this, or you shouldn't go out, certainly, because of this virus, so, so to speak. And here we are whining and complaining in our homes, and we have a roof over our head, and generally we have food. Um, I know that there are a lot of needy places that are suffering uh, worse because of this, but in the end, I will bet not one of you out there said, oh, but what about underwear? And now I want you to say, oh, but what about underwear and what else? Right, Sarah? What else? Underwear is take it for granted. Um, it, it's not a frivolous thing. It can become a necessity for women and girls. And I hope that you will visit Sarah's site, um, You Underwear. Sarah, is it, uh, when I searched for it, I had to go to you.o.u. Underwear. It's, it's just you underwear so you as in 
just Y-O-U. It stands for your own underwear because we think everybody should have exactly that. Um, but it's just youunderwear.com and you will find us. And there's more about Smalls for All and the charities that we support and, and awesome. what we do on there. Awesome. So. Well, I can't thank you enough because this has been something I feel like I, I did something good today. Um, I can only hope now if I can get it in front of more and more people that it will create some kind of domino effect and, and it will help um, wake those of us up who, yes, we support this charity or that, <clears throat> but wait, what about underwear? So yeah, I mean, that's, yes, well, thank you. That's exactly, it woke me up. <laughs> and I'm now just trying to, yeah, do that and try and provide the basic stuff that we take for granted to people here and around the world that don't have it because it does have a big impact. And it's, it's a relatively simple thing that we can do. Yes, absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. This is Yvonne DeVita from Smart Women Conversations. We were talking to Sarah Jordan from You Underwear, and I will have all her information on the blog.